Electric Storm Blue, what an appropriate name for the first ever RAV4 hybrid. You know, the RAV4 has been around since 1994. It's now in its fourth generation, actually fourth and a half. This is a mid-cycle refresh, so they've made some changes. Got a new face, got a new ass, and they got a new model, an SE model. They've also added, the, for the very first time, a hybrid. This is the eighth model in Toyota's lineup to receive a hybrid engine, and uh, this is part of their promise. They said back in 2010, by the end of the decade, they wanted all their models to have a hybrid version, and sure enough, here we are. The RAV4 has been a true hero for the Toyota brand. Since 1994, they've sold over 2.4 million units, and 80% of those are still on the road today. We've been telling you for quite some time now that this is the hottest segment. People love these compact crossovers. They just make a lot of sense. Room for five, plenty of cargo room. Speaking of cargo room, typically when you get into a hybrid, you're going to lose some space because you got to put those batteries somewhere. But in the case of the RAV4 hybrid, you only lose about three cubic feet. That's pretty impressive. And it's still, even with the battery pack, one of the leading cargo capacity crossovers in the entire segment. Under the hood, of course, you're going to have two powertrains. You have your gasoline motor, a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, and you have an electric motor. The net horsepower is 194 and 206 pound-feet of torque. That's 18 more horsepower and 34 more pound-feet of torque than the standard gasoline model. And guess what? It's only going to cost you about $700 more. Now, the hybrid is only available in two trim levels, the XLE and Limited. Uh, some more little fun facts about this vehicle. The all-wheel drive system is pretty neat. It's not connected like you would think. They're basically front-wheel drive uh, vehicles. If you get the all-wheel drive version, there are separate electric motors in the back, and it's all controlled electronically. It's a CVT, which we're not huge fans of, but this CVT is pretty good. It actually has uh, you know, six uh, kind of gears that it mimics. They're not true gears, but it feels like six true shifts when you're driving it. Um, overall, it's all about fuel economy, right? 34 in the city, 31 in the highway, combined 33. Having driven the RAV4 Hybrid back-to-back -back versus the gasoline model, you do notice that it has better acceleration. So you're not going to lose anything in that department. In fact, you're going to gain as well as gain significant fuel economy. Despite its six sequential shifts or uh, what I call fake shifts, uh, it still is a CVT. It feels like a CVT. So uh, no matter what they do to these, I don't think they'll ever uh, provide drivers with that true enthusiastic uh, you know, step shifts that we're accustomed to. Uh, you also have uh, this new bird's eye view monitor. Uh, we've seen this from other manufacturers, but what Toyota's managed to do is stitch it all together so it's very seamless. Uh, it gives you a nice fluid picture as opposed to having, having it uh, sectioned off into four quadrants. From the interior design, they could have been a little more consistent. You have round vents on the outside, rectangular ones on the inside. I know I'm being picky, but it would have been nice to have everything consistent. Uh, but the nice uh, upgrades to the interior are very uh, welcoming. On the outside, they kind of raised the front a little bit, raised the back a little bit to give it more of a rugged SUV look. Let's be honest, this is a compact crossover. It's not a rugged SUV. It's not a Land Cruiser. It's not a 4Runner. It's a RAV4. You want to make a rugged SUV? Well, make a body on frame, miniature version of the Land Cruiser. But for now, it's a very solid crossover. And as far as recommendations, they're all pretty good. RAV4, CRV, Escape, just to name a few. The new Tucson is really solid. It's going to come down to what what really uh, is being offered at the time. As you can see, we've been driving the top of the line limited model all day. It comes in at around $28,400, very nicely equipped. You can also see some of the design changes they made back here. Uh, the upper trim levels are going to get LED lights up front, also in the rear. Uh, overall, we think that the changes they made are going to be able to carry this through for the next two or three years when the fifth generation RAV4 comes along. For now, it's really the only 
hybrid in the segment. Yeah, Subaru has that XV Crosstrek, but that's a mild hybrid. You don't get the incremental savings in fuel economy that you get with, uh, with the RAV4. I think this is going to just increase their market share overall, and uh, I think they really have a winner on their hands. I'm Ron Doran for The Driver's Seat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.